I don't sew very often, but when I do, I like to have a few tools on the machine. Uh, the first is a little pair of scissors, a marking pencil, and my seam ripper. And for a long time, I've been trying to come up with a way to mount these to my machine so that if I take my machine upstairs to sew on the kitchen table or wherever I need to take it, I have these with me. So let's get to modeling. So I'm fairly new to Fusion 360. I've used SketchUp for well over a decade and I'm very comfortable in it. Um, but there's some limitations. So I've started playing around in Fusion 360 on some simple projects like this. And once you kind of understand how it works, um, it's fairly easy to get the hang of. Fusion 360 is a parametric software. So basically you start off with a two dimensional sketch. And here you can see I just drew a rectangle uh, with two circles and a smaller rectangle inside. Um, the smaller rectangle will be the hole for my scissors and the two circles, one will hold the pencil and one will hold the seam ripper. And so you can constrain each of these features, basically setting dimensions between features, whether it be the center point of the circles and the edge of the part or the center point of the circles and the edge of another hole or however you wish to constrain it uh, so that things are laid out. And you'll notice there are some lines that are blue and some lines that are black. And so the black lines mean that the part is constrained and the software will remember how it needs to you know, relate to all the other parts on that sketch. Uh, so once you get the part sketched out, um, you can finish the sketch and then extrude it into a 3D shape. So um, you can see I extruded it up there to my overall height, which was 40 millimeters. And now I'm working on the taper for the scissor hole. So I went back and modified the original sketch so that it started with a small hole for the bottom. And then on the top edge, I added another sketch on that top surface and just put a single rectangle in there. And then I used the loft tool. And the loft tool will basically do it an even transition between two different shapes. So if I had, I had the smaller rectangle on the bottom and the larger on the top, and you can see it kind of taper that hole. And here I'm making, closing the bottom of one of the holes so my seam ripper doesn't fall through. And you can see for the pencil hole, I did like a little taper so the tip of the pencil will actually stick out the bottom and I won't break the break the tip off the pencil and drop it in there. So uh, going back through, I had some constraints that were messed up. I'm going through fixing those. And then here I'm actually going to do a section analysis so I can basically slice down the middle just to make sure that my angles and stuff look correct. And I just played around with it until I got something that I was happy with. And you can see I added a chamfer to the top edge of those holes just so the parts will kind of slide in there a little better. Could have changed in a few more dimensions and kind of offsetting the scissor hole a little bit towards the front edge. And I'm still still trying to get the full hang of Fusion 360 and all the constraints work. But um, here I'm adding a, a fillet to a couple of the edges just to make them a little break the edge a little bit, so a little bit of a rounded corner. And they're all good. We will export this out as a uh, 3D file. And now I've got uh, Kira open. Kira is the slicing software. So you can see I uploaded the model in there. I do some settings and then slice it. And you can see what each individual slice is going to look like. Now we go into printing it. And this took about an hour to print. And there we go. Well, that's going to be it for this one, guys. Uh, hope you like this. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. And until next time, we'll see you later.